welcome to Inner Voice of Knowing podcast. I'm Kay Doran, a shamanic leadership coach and healer, guiding you through life with a foot in both worlds. When you understand the terrain of the inner landscapes, the mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic, you will become the leader within your physical life, both personally and professionally. After all, the power of change is in your hands. Let's get this journey started. Welcome back to Inner Voice of Knowing. I'm really excited to be here recording this episode um, for you, and I'll tell you why. For those of you that listen to all my episodes, you'll be aware that uh, two episodes previously, uh, episode 31, I was talking about preparation, etc., for the Camino, my personal pilgrimage, and I've returned literally days ago. So I'm I'm feeling so expanded, uh, like I've I'm next version K. But here's the thing: it's always about listening to that knowing, right? So I had in mind, right up until this morning, exactly what this next episode was going to be about. Until I was in the shower. And it was just there. So today, the journey is about walking between the worlds of change. And let me share with you how this <laughs> how this came about. I've come back with with an injury. It was a tough walk. It was it was probably the toughest thing I've ever done, the most challenging thing I've ever done physically in my life and also the most rewarding. So I went to my friend to work on this injury uh, and someone that actually works with her was there and was was asking about how we're feeling. I'm getting a lot of questions since I'm home, like, how are you feeling? And it's interesting because I've spoken to other pilgrims that have become friends from around the world and we're all feeling very similar my friend and I in particular, and I was describing it to this person because my program, The Launching Pad, is all about going for those aspirations, consciously crafting and creating and becoming that life that you aspire to. And in order to do that, having to move beyond our comfort zone and and all of what that actually entails. So this was my pilgrimage on the Camino, absolutely way beyond my comfort zone. And so many things where um, discomfort and pure joy or pain and absolute pleasure sat side by side. They walked together exhaustion and energy walked to hand in hand together. Now, in the beginning, that journey was so physically challenging, energetically exhausting. They say the first part, because it's broken into three parts, is very much about the body. And boy, does the body, <laughs> does the body get challenged with terrain and weather that's another podcast. But after six weeks of walking, what happens is maybe two weeks into it, for my friend and I anyway, something starts to shift. And then definitely by halfway, you have completely changed. What was uncomfortable starts to become normal. What felt challenging moved more into ease. And it's due also to the repetition. You wake up in the end early. That was choice. You know, throw the backpack on, get the body ready. Sorry, get the body ready, throw the backpack on, um, clip ourselves in, get the head torch on and start 
hiking. Um, the hike would maybe start at, let's say, 7 o'clock in the morning, some days earlier, and generally finish maybe 1.30, 2.30, with one sort of breakfast break maybe at about 9 to 10 o'clock for us, depending on what was available. Then it would be get to the accommodation, shower, you know, wander around and explore or sit and have a drink with other pilgrims, etc. But basically then you go to bed, you wake up and you do the same again and the same again and the same again. And there is a, a switch that flicks without you even realising it where that is your new normal, that is your new familiar. There's a surrendering, an acceptance, an allowing and an embracing which is interesting because I took an intention into my daily Camino pilgrimage and my personal intention was allow, accept, embrace. So my awareness has come back to that, that there was a moment in this repetitive cycle that at first felt so uncomfortable and so unfamiliar and what the, and why am I doing this momentarily, to that absolute letting go, looking forward to, exhaustion was still allowed to exist, it was accepted, it was embraced, but the totality of the life of each day was loved, the connections made with others, the whole experience became my life. And it got me thinking because then people have said, well, how are you feeling about being home? And I said, it's like a double-edged sword. Even getting on the aeroplane, my friend and I, and, and many others have said this to me as well, it was a happy, sad occasion. Happy to be coming home to family, you know, to, to, to our homes, to our comfortable beds and all the comforts that come with that. But sad to be leaving this life, this experience that had become our new normal. Um, I was away for 43 days, four days of that were flights. You know, one day either side was, one day was experiencing Paris and the next day at the end, the last day was experiencing Portugal and Lisbon. The rest of it was the journey, was daily life and experience. It was hiking the Camino, walking the Camino. So when I was asked yesterday, I gave this description of it's wonderful to be home, but there's also, it's a strange feeling because there's a sadness because a whole nother life has been left behind. And she said, well, are you, are you not allowing? And I'm like, yes, but I'm walking between the two worlds of the change. So that's what hit me this morning in the shower. This is what I need to talk about. This is a different way for me to even express to you as the shaman that I am how this applies to when we all go through change. And then how do we bring that change and integrate it into the life we've been living that's so familiar. Because there are things that have changed me, of course, because I've gone through change. I ended up living nearly seven weeks with hardly any clothes, not spoilt for choice, two tops or a jacket to choose from in the evening, the one pair of trousers that I wasn't hiking in, because to lighten the load part way, 
we needed to let go of things. We needed to let go of things that were in our backpack that that were weighing us down and really ask the question, do we really need this? And this is what we do when we go through change to become and to create very consciously the life that we aspire to. We can't carry everything with us that we have previously. We can't. And the Camino for me, this this pilgrimage has highlighted how true it's highlighted everything for me of how I live, who I am, the power of the things that I share with you to integrate into your life that create and sustain change. My whole launching pad program and way of creating these next versions of yourself and your life and your outcomes. But there is a time where you feel those two worlds. You've moved into a new familiar and you're probably still living in your home or in certain things that are familiar And there is a time to walk between those worlds and understand that you're walking between the worlds of change, of what has once been familiar, what has become familiar through the work and the application and the choice to change. Because then there's the moment where you really integrate and become clear on what you can't take fully into your final step of integration, into that full manifestation on the other side of that change. I I came home and there were photos of all my family and my children that I have absolutely loved and all all over the fridge. And I needed to clear it all down and just leave the one that had all my children and my grandchildren, including ourselves, up there. I'm walking into every space in the house going, do I really need this? How can I clear this? Because I've learned over those seven weeks, I don't need as much as I think I need or thought I needed. And the load carried was so much lighter. So to do that physically, to do that emotionally, to do that mentally, the walking between the worlds of change is when you're living a new normal, still feeling the old normal and a bit of a clearing of how do you integrate those two because everything's about that integration. And if you don't stop and bring that awareness to the fact that you are walking a pathway between two worlds and that's where you're exactly meant to be for a reason and it's communicating to you what you need to self-reflect on and perhaps action, it was right at the end of the last week on that journey that I took through Spain, where with some injuries sustained that I needed to decide that my backpack needed to be forwarded on. I needed to walk to actually complete my intention, my aspiration to complete the outcome. 
I needed to put the load down. So I did it symbolically. I did it where I said, right, this is everything I've carried with me up to this point that I don't need. I'm not putting it on my back anymore. I'm lightening the load. So I did it in my shamanic way, very symbolically. I did it as a bit of a a, a ceremony. I did it as a ceremony of what it signified for me physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, energetically. And that is what I'm needing to do now. That's what we all need to do when we feel like we're in that space of walking between the worlds of change. So now I self-reflect and then I go, okay, in order to integrate this change, I need to revisit all my boundaries. How much time am I going to allow to social media? Because I can see how it easily invades and permeates. And guess what? I thrived without it for seven weeks. The only time I checked my emails was to clear the junk that comes in, not look at everything else. Only time I was making a call was to family. Everything was stripped away and I thrived. So the walking between the worlds is that time for you to look and assess. And I say the boundaries because it's the boundaries around areas of your life the boundaries around, do you need those 30 T-shirts? I'm not saying I've got 30. I'm using it as an example. Do you need those 30 T-shirts in there? Do you need those 15 pairs of jeans? And I don't have them. I'm, again, just throwing out examples and I'm exaggerating for the lesson. So let's put it this way. The power question would be, what do I actually need hanging in my cupboard? What do I need? How do I need my office set up that gives me that feeling of space and functionality and ease? Here's the thing, ease. Everything on that pilgrimage, and here's the truth of it, if you're turning your vision inwards, if you're doing this journey, if you're living this, and integrating and applying this, you are on your own personal pilgrimage. The pilgrimage taken for me to go and start from France and cross the Pyrenees and walk through Spain has just highlighted and amplified everything. But if you're doing this, if you're living this, if you're applying this, you are taking your own personal pilgrimage every day. And I realised, absolutely realised partway along, my whole life has been my pilgrimage. The Camino pilgrimage highlighted that truth for me. And that no matter what terrain I'm taken into, all the principles everything that I teach and share with everybody else that I personally live takes me through every single terrain I could possibly find myself in that was amplified on this particular pilgrimage. Sometimes we take a pilgrimage like that and create an experience like that and walk in a different world and a different reality to find ourselves, which is really to see ourselves again. Or sometimes, in my case, it's to truly see who I am and how I am, regardless 
of the terrain I'm put into. So it's an integration moment again. Time to ask those power questions, time to set those, those boundaries in every area of life from health and well-being to your spirituality to your relationships to your things every area personally and professionally you cannot separate them anyway the same principles apply so if you're having moments as you're going through change and you've been applying all these new things or deepening the application of them and the integration expansion of them into your life and you have a moment where you feel like you are walking between two worlds, you are my friend, you are and it's wonderful, celebrate it but remember Everything is communicating to you. Everything has its purpose for you. So don't let the ego mind get involved and tell you that you're lost between two worlds. You're lost between two places. I don't know who I am. Don't go there. It's not required. It's a false story and belief. The ego does it to bring you back to where you were. Subconscious can be playing out those false stories and beliefs to pull you back. But it's not about going back or moving forwards when you're walking between the worlds. It's about being fully present right now and taking the time to integrate. What of your old previous life and self comes with you? and what gets left behind so those two worlds can integrate and merge into one. Then you will find and experience and embrace all the profound results in all their simplicity of unfolding taking place for you. The new opportunities the new integrated sense of reality, more expanded outcomes, offerings that seem to arrive out of nowhere, all the what seems like magic and miraculous. So don't bring something heavy into that space that doesn't belong there. It's that which you're being asked to put down. It's that which is being highlighted right now to say, like I did, put that pack down. That cannot come with me for my end result. Metaphorically, that pack was. But also very physically, it couldn't come with me anymore so what choice are you going to make now if you too feel like you are walking between the worlds of change are you going to recognize it for what it is and do what's of required for the integration to take place It's a powerful, powerful moment. And if you're not there yet and you're going through change, that space, that place will 
you will find yourself in it. And the most beautiful thing is bringing conscious awareness to it. So if you're forewarned, it's a bit like the Camino book that I had. It would tell me how many kilometres I would be walking or choose to walk the next day, what the terrain was like, what percentage I was walking here on road or, you know, out in the wild or dirt tracks, whatever it might be, how steep the ascents were or the incline down. So if I was forewarned, I was prepared. I wasn't taken by surprise. And that's why the power of learning to understand the landscape and how the mind communicates, the landscape and the communication of the emotions, the landscape and communication from the seen and unseen, the landscape and communication, which really is is energy, and then physically. So when you know what terrain you are travelling through, you have a deep level of allowing the acceptance and the embrace. And that, my dear friends, is a surrender and a letting go because you know it has purpose to it in what you're aspiring to, in who you're aspiring to become, in the results and the life you are learning to consciously craft and create. And you cannot carry everything of the old into that creation. So feel joyous if you're listening to this and you're feeling that you're walking between the worlds of your change. Celebrate and integrate. It's freedom. It's freedom to understand. And it might have feelings of discomfort, but also joy. Allow them to travel together if that's what's called for. Okay, I hope this has given you some insight, but remember I've asked you to apply power questions, to look into every area of your life and set those new boundaries because the old boundaries won't work in that new world, in that new life. Take the time to do this. You're not missing out on everything. Everything that's required of you is here for you right now. Take the opportunity. Bring your awareness to it. Apply what's called for. And create the path and the moments of greater ease. And remember... The power of change, it's in your hands. That also means the power of choice. Catch you next time. Join me on my next episode. And if you love this podcast, please subscribe by clicking on the plus button if you're on Apple or like and follow on Spotify. Rate and review. And please share in a voice of knowing with your friends.